Lewis Houck was a lot of things. He was a capitalist, a dreamer, a journalist, but most importantly, he was a pioneer. What he was not, or at least not when he began, was a railroad man. Yet he is remembered as the father of Southeast Missouri Railroads. A WPA, Writers Project historian, even referred to Houck as the father of Southeast Missouri because he opened up that region to development of the timber industry through a series of railroad lines that reached points into the Boot Hill wilderness that other railroad companies bypassed because they said it would be too expensive and difficult to construct railroads in the middle of nowhere. Lewis Houck was born the oldest of five children on April 1, 1840, in St. Clair County, Illinois. Houck's father was a printer that traveled around Illinois during the 1840s where he worked for several different newspapers. When he was three years old, his family moved to Missouri. He spent most of his childhood and young adulthood learning and eventually running a newspaper. He entered the University of Wisconsin and then transferred to a more economically suitable small college where he earned his law degree. Houck practiced law for four years in Cairo, Illinois before moving to Cape Girardeau in 1869. Houck chose to practice law and live in Cape Girardeau because he believed the city was ripe for growth and development. Places like St. Louis and Memphis were already controlled by rich industrialists. It was hard to gain any true wealth in places like those where not only did the rich control the city, they also owned most of the land around the city. He knew that he needed to find a large town not yet controlled by a political machine in order to have a chance to succeed as a businessman and lawyer. He needed a place to plant his roots and have the room to expand his holdings. He found that place at Cape Girardeau. It became the springboard into the swampy frontier of southeast Missouri. In 1881, Houck bought his very first railroad, a 15-mile line of track that ran west from Cape Girardeau to the railroad tycoon Jay Gould's Iron Mountain Line near Delta, Missouri. Jay Gould's Iron Mountain Railroad System formed a large triangle in southeast Missouri. From after the Civil War until Houck purchased his first line, Gould's railroads were the only links to the outside world in southeast Missouri yet they did not penetrate into the sparsely populated swamps of the Missouri Boot Hill. From 1892 to 1902, Houck built another railroad, his second south of Cape Girardeau that traversed 250 miles of sparsely populated backwoods and dense forest. This second line intersected Gould's southernmost Missouri line that ran from St. Louis to Arkansas, called the Cotton Belt. His third line was built north of Cape Girardeau to service communities between Cape and St. Louis. Houck planned to create a terminus of railroads from his hometown of Cape Girardeau on the Mississippi River that would connect it with St. Louis and Memphis while connecting smaller communities along the way. What makes Lewis Houck so unique is that for all of his accomplishments, some of which made him a great deal of money while others were economic disasters, his motivation remained more about the public good of Cape Girardeau in southeast Missouri than it was about creating an economic empire. Houck had to consistently fight to keep his railroads operating. The late 1800s and early 1900s were a time of big business and corporate consolidation of smaller businesses folded into larger corporations. Jay Gould, a well-known captain of industry, or robber baron, depending on one's point of view, who bought large Missouri Pacific lines in 1879, by 1887, Gould's railroad empire included nearly 10,000 miles of track, a giant compared to Houck's 500 miles of track in southeast Missouri. Houck, however, was not one to be pushed around, especially not in his home territory of southeast Missouri. It was at this time when Gould's railroad buyers hounded at the doors of Houck's investors that Houck began to employ one of his best assets, mass media. When Houck was a child, he worked at his father's German-language newspaper in Illinois, beginning when he was about 10 years old. Houck painted a picture in local newspapers of large outside corporations, such as Jay Gould, that would sweep into his beloved southeast Missouri and simply gobble up small locally owned railroads and shut them down, leaving the rural wilderness of the Missouri boot heel 
to remain what he and other businessmen called a wasteland of opportunity. Halk was keen enough to paint a picture to locals that he was the hero and that Gould was the outside corporate villain who only wanted to exploit Southeast Missouri. Halk wrote that this is another move on the part of Gould to break me down and drive me and any other locals out of the business of transportation in this portion of the state and intimidate all others from attempting to build any other railroads in this section. Using his local connections in county courts in Dunklin, Stoddard, and Cape Girardeau counties, Houck was able to beat Gould from taking over his railroads. Even though the victory was a temporary one, Houck spun a story of the little guy conquering a giant. In 1875, a new Missouri Constitutional Convention was called. Partly to address elements of the federal government's reconstruction policies, but largely to prevent counties from signing over land to railroad companies that planned to build through the county because of complaints from locals of fraud by county officials that took bribes or kickbacks for land awarded to potential railroad firms. That promise to develop new lines in southeast Missouri. Out-of-state railroad companies in many cases simply flipped the land deeded over to them and then disappeared leaving locals high and dry. Hauk found a way around this new statute. At the same time that the railroad boom was overtaking the nation, the largest reclamation land project in the country was being addressed by the turn of the century in southeast Missouri. Counties wanted their land drained so that the land could be used for agricultural purposes. Hauk saw an opportunity to obtain a land right of way for his railroads by tying in their construction with the construction of drainage ditches. He obtained land grants in southern Wayne County because he built his railroad on a 12-foot high levee flanked on both sides with drainage ditches. In 1902, Houck sold his southern line in southeast Missouri to the St. Louis and San Francisco for over a million dollars. When this line was built, towns such as Malden and Risco were formed in Dunklin County. Towns scattered all throughout southeast Missouri owe their birth to the efforts and work of Lewis Houck. In 1910, Houck's Central Railroad that left Cape and headed in a southwest direction along the Stoddard and Cape Girardeau County lines terminated at New Lakeville, a community he laid out and planned. It was later named Advance due to the advance that was made with the railroad. Houck named several towns that sprang up along his railroad lines. He named Charter Oak in eastern Stoddard County after the Charter Oak Land and Lumber Company that was located there that guaranteed Houck all of their business if the railroad went through there. Houck named more than a dozen new communities that sprang up along his railroad, many of which are still communities today. Throughout most of his adult life, Houck spent his time figuring out ways to bring southeast Missouri into a modern age and away from the frontier image that many thought of it whenever they think of Southeast Missouri, a dense, wet, and unforgiving swampland frontier. When he struggled to get the people of Cape Girardeau to support a new railroad in their city, he found a way to get their support by successfully fighting to get a normal college built in Cape. Never one to take a back seat, he was elected to the first Board of Regents of Southeast Missouri State University which he was president for 36 of the 38 years he was on board. Much to the efforts of Lewis Houck, Cape Girardeau flourished from actions set in motion by Houck in his efforts to obtain railroad traffic and a university for his hometown, which he loved greatly. In February 1925, Houck became ill with pneumonia and passed away at the age of 85. Over the years, he wore many hats and was addressed by many titles but the title he was most proud of was the father of Southeast Missouri. Mm -hmm.